Next we're going to learn about statistical inference for two proportions. The goal here is going to be to estimate the value of the parameter p1 minus p2, where p1 and p2 are both proportions from different uh, populations, or they are different proportions from the same population. Uh, it turns out that the difference between two normal distributions is still a normal distribution, so our sample differences are going to follow a normal distribution just like our single sample proportions did, and we'll be able to apply some central limit theorem results here as well. So with the confidence intervals for two proportions, it's going to work about the same as before. We're going to have a point estimate, we're going to have a multiplier z star, and we're going to have a standard error, and then the, point, the confidence interval is going to be the point estimate minus z star times the standard error up to the point estimate plus z star times the standard error. Uh, in this case, the point estimate is going to be the difference between the two sample proportions. Uh, and it turns out we might have to calculate those manually, in which case the ith sample proportion is the number of successes divided by the number of failures, or divided by the total sample size. Uh, z star, as usual, is the inverse norm of 1 minus half the error. So if you want a 95% confidence interval, that's going to be 1 minus half of 5%. And then the standard error, so like I said, I said that the um, difference between two normal distributions is still a normal distribution, and the variance is the sum of those variances. So the standard error is going to be the square root of p1 hat times 1 minus p1 hat over n1 plus p2 hat times 1 minus p2 hat over n2. Then in the case of the hypothesis test, we're going to have our null hypothesis always be that the two proportions are equal. All right, well, another way to say that is that the difference between the two proportions is zero. Our alternative hypothesis, on the other hand, is going to be that P1 is either greater than P2, less than P2, or either less than or greater than P2. And therefore, another way to say each one of those is that the difference is either greater than zero, less than zero, or unequal to zero. The standard error for the hypothesis test is going to involve something called a pooled sample proportion. Uh, remember, the hypothesis test is assuming that the two proportions are equal. So to get an estimate for that supposedly equal proportion, we pool the two sample proportions. So it's the total number of successes divided by the total number of trials. Then the standard error is equal to the square root of that pooled proportion times its complement times 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2. And so that's basically the same as dividing by n. That's what role that plays. Then our test statistic is the point estimate, p1 hat minus p2 hat minus what the null hypothesis says it is, which is zero, divided by that standard error. All right, so let's see an example. It says a surprising number of young adults still live in their parents' home. This is a particularly salient example right now. Uh, a random sample by the National Institute of Health included 22, 53 men and 26, 29 women in this age group. Uh, so our X X1, our N1 is going to be this number of men. Our N2 is going to be this number of women. The survey found that 986 of the men, that's uh, X1, and 923 of the women, that's X2, still live with their parents, use this data to determine if there is good evidence that different proportions of young men and women live with their parents using a hypothesis test and a 95% confidence interval. So P1 hat is X1 over N1, and that turns out to be 0.4376. P2 hat is X2 over N2, and that turns out to be 0.355. So our sample proportions are definitely different, but it 
we have to ask the question, are, does that mean that the true proportions are different? And so that's what hypothesis test is going to tell us. Our null hypothesis is always that the two proportions are the same or that their difference is equal to zero. Our alternative hypothesis in this case, because we're talking about the proportions being different, is that their difference is not zero. Not greater than or less than zero, because we're not asking if one of the proportions is greater, we're just asking are they different. All right, so we need to come up with our standard error, which means we need this pooled sample proportion, p hat, uh, which is the total number of successes divided by the total number of trials. That turns out to be 0.391. And I want to make the comment that p hat should be between p1 hat and p2 hat because it's an average. It doesn't make sense for it to be greater than one of them. Uh, so 0.391 is in the appropriate range of that average. Then the standard error is going to be the square root of 0.391 times 1 minus 0.391 times 1 over uh, 2,253 plus 1 over 2,629. That square root is going to be equal to 0 0.014. Now our test statistic is p1 hat minus p2 hat divided by our standard error. Remember I said that there is technically a minus zero here because you're subtracting the null hypothesis value, but we don't need to write down minus zero, so I won't. The z-score is equal to 6.1786. So remember the whole idea behind a hypothesis test is we want to determine whether or not this value is surprising. If we get a lot of surprising test statistics, that means the null hypothesis is probably not true. And so we remember from our normal distribution that a z-score of 6 is incredibly unlikely. So we expect to have evidence in favor of the alternative hypothesis. All right, let's calculate that p-value. Since we're asking are the proportions different, that means we're going to look at both the left and right tail of the distribution. So we want to know what is the probability that the proportions are off by our amount in either the positive direction or the negative direction. All right, so we're going to try to capture both of those areas. We do that using the 2 times the normal CDF of both the probability, so 2 times the CDF of the probability that it's above it, so 6.1786 up to 9999. Uh, remember that's the positive value of the z-score up to 9999. That p-value is incredibly small as we guessed, 0 0.00000000, what is that? That's eight zeros, I need one more, uh, 65. So what this p-value tells us is that if the null hypothesis is true, in other words, if the same proportion of men and women lived with their parents, we'd see our data or something more extreme point, I'm going to put seven zeros here, six five percent of the time. I took away two zeros because I was putting a percent sign. That's incredibly unlikely. We would see that almost never if the null hypothesis were true. So our conclusion is that there is very strong evidence for the alternative hypothesis. There is very strong evidence that the proportions are different. 
All right, so now let's take a look at our confidence interval. Confidence intervals are a lot simpler than hypothesis tests. Remember, it's a 95% confidence interval as well. All right, so we're going to need a point estimate, which is P1 hat minus P2 hat. We're going to need a multiplier, which is the inverse norm of 1 minus alpha over 2. Alpha, in this case, is 0.05. And we're going to need our standard error, which is, in this case, the square root of P1 hat times 1 minus P1 hat over N1 plus P2 hat times 1 minus P2 hat over N2. Our point estimate, which you might have calculated when you were doing the z-score, is 0 0.0865. Our z-score, our z-star, is the inverse norm of 0.975, which is 1.96. And our standard error turns out to be, uh, when we plug in p1 hat and p2 hat as they were before, uh, it's also 0.014. I have to make the comment here that it's not exactly the same 0.014 as the one for the hypothesis test. It just, with rounding, it turns out to be the same. They're close, but they're not equal. All right, so the confidence interval is always the point estimate minus z star se, our margin of error, up to point estimate plus z star se, which in this case, once you run those numbers, is 0 0.059 up to 0.1139. So the interpretation of this confidence interval is that we are 95% confident the difference in the proportions of men and women who live with their parents is between 5.9% and 11.39%. And we want to make a comment here. If you remember from before, we said that in a two-sided hypothesis test, if the null is unlikely, then it's not going to be in the confidence interval. All right, well, take a look at our confidence interval. Our confidence interval is point 0.059 up to 0.1139, and 0, which is the null hypothesis value, is not contained inside that interval. Uh, so our confidence interval gives us the same information that our hypothesis test does.